Welcome, welcome. We are now live here on YouTube. And I think in a minute, we will also be live on Instagram. We'll see how this goes. But welcome to this live English lesson on man-made disasters. Oh yeah, this should be a fun one. We are going to talk about train derailments. We are going to talk about bridges collapsing. We are going to talk about dams failing. It should be a lot of fun. No, this will not be the most fun subject to talk about, but it's an important one. If you are wanting to learn English, sometimes you have to talk about the bad things too. So we will be talking about some pretty awful things, but I think it will really help you improve your English. So a few members are here. We just had a members chat and it was good to chat with some of you. Tanya is here. Oh, and later on in the lesson, there are going to be a few words that I am nervous about pronouncing. And I already know I am going to pronounce one of the German words wrong. There's also a Japanese word I'm scared about, and there's an English word, infrastructure. I hope I say it correctly, infrastructure. I think that was pretty good. Yulia's here, good to see you. Michael, he is also from Germany. I'm sorry, I probably will say one of your words wrong. Harry's here, he's from Indonesia, and it looks like France is also in the house. Zazadu, 69. Interesting number there. Hmm. I wonder why you picked that one. All right. Welcome. Mode. Hope you're doing well. All right. Hopefully the internet. Oh, no. 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 Afayez. Tsunami. We do have that one in English. I'm glad you mentioned that. So, tsunami would be a, a natural disaster. So one that humans can't control. Today, we are going to be talking about man-made disasters. So for one reason or another, it is the fault of the humans. It is their fault. They are the reason that this happened. So... We'll talk about dams. You know, if, if dams were never created, dam failures wouldn't happen. Humans created dams. Sometimes they fail because of natural reasons, but we'll get that. We'll get that. All right. Freddie, how have you been in the last five minutes? Not bad. I was trying to get the live stream going on Instagram. So we'll see. Hopefully, that, hopefully it's working. We'll see. Okay. All right. Let's get to it here because you're here to, nah, Hafez, no problem. Tsunami. I can say that though. Let's do it. Okay. Isabel, welcome. A little easier for me to pronounce. Fafa, hope you're doing well. All right. So let's get into this live lesson. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I don't have my slides ready. There they are. We're ready to do it. All right, so man-made disasters, part two. There is a part one. I will link to that in the description. But here in the thumbnail, you can see there is a car going off a bridge, which looks like it has failed. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, the first thing I would like to talk about are dams. Now. Be careful. Dam, it can be a bad word. It can be a swear word. It can be a curse word in English. But when you are swearing, the dam has an N at the end. All of the dams here will not end with an N. They will look like, like that. Dams. 
So if you don't know what a dam is, let's talk about that first. A dam is like a big wall built across a river to stop water from flowing. This makes the water level go up behind the wall, creating a large pool or lake. So, and we'll talk about why some of these dams are built. So there's a pretty good picture of what a dam looks like in English. You can see that big wall and behind it is probably a river that has been stopped and now you have more water behind it. But why do people build dams? Well, in English, we say people build dams to make electricity or to store water that towns and cities can use. So if a town or a city experiences something called a drought, a drought is when there is little or no rain, they can have extra rain water. They can have extra water. We call that a reservoir. Another English word that is very French, a reservoir. So dams are built sometimes to create a reservoir. And a reservoir is a large natural or man-made lake used as a source of water supply. So dams, when they work correctly, can be really good. They can be really beneficial. They can be really helpful. But what we are talking about today are disasters. So when things go wrong, dams failing which leads to flooding and destruction. See, do I have a picture of some destruction? This looks nice, actually. This looks more like a, a reservoir where you have some extra water if you need it. But when a dam fails, it can cause a flood. So sometimes floods are natural. They can't be helped. Maybe too much rain falls. Can you really blame humans for that? I don't know. If you believe in climate change, maybe. But rain is a natural thing. Humans don't make that happen. But a flood is when a large amount of water goes in places that it shouldn't be. Flood can also be a verb. If you've been with the channel for about a year and a half, you might remember my basement flooded. So we have flooded can be a verb. Flood is a noun. Flood is a noun. Flooded is a verb for the past tense, but flood can also be a verb. Don't you love English? We're going to talk about engineers later on, and they can be like two different jobs. So um, last winter, back in December, parts of my town flooded. There was a flood in parts of my town. So you have it as a noun, and you have it as a verb. Next thing I would like to talk about in English is something we call infrastructure. Infrastructure. So a dam would be part of infrastructure. Bridges, which we will talk about later. Part of infrastructure. So you might hear this word when you hear man-made disasters. What is infrastructure? Well, it's the basic stuff. Like roads, airports, bridges, buildings that a town or country needs to run smoothly. So this just makes life easier. Infrastructure. So for you to get to work in the morning, if you go over a bridge, 
that's really good. You don't have to wait on a boat. You don't have to get out of your car and swim across the river. Infrastructure makes towns, countries run more smoothly. If your country has really good infrastructure, it probably has smooth roads. Infrastructure. How about this? Infrastructure also includes buildings like schools and hospitals and large projects for water and electricity. So like those dams we talked about earlier, they help life run more smoothly. But when life doesn't run smoothly, if your town has a dam that is holding back water, well, one thing that could happen is that dam gets breached. That dam could get breached. Breaching means a break or gap in a dam leading to a huge loss of water. And if you look at that picture right now, that dam has been breached for whatever reason. Maybe it's because people made it wrong, but that dam has been breached. There is water that is rushing through the dam. And it looks like, are those cars on top of the dam? I think so. So you can imagine if there is a town or city down river, it is probably going to be flooded. It is probably going to look like that, unfortunately. What about this? When water breaches a dam, it flows over or breaks the dam and can cause a flood. Yeah, that's not good. And if the flood is bad enough, the town might have to be evacuated. There might be an evacuation. So this is another one of those words that sounds differently if we use it as a verb or a noun. The town has to be evacuated. That is the verb. An evacuation was issued for the town. Well, what is an evacuation? It's when people are forced to leave their homes because of a dangerous situation. Take a look at this. That looks dangerous. Now, of course, I asked AI, create an image where people are evacuating. And this is what they showed. Yeah, that wave is, is that a wave or are those clouds? Either way, if, those, if that is water, that's bad. If those are clouds, it looks like that town has a very big storm coming. It's been a little while. I would like to check the chat. We have been learning English for a while. At least, I hope you have been learning English. I don't think, oh, it is. Hey, Instagram is working. Looks like there are 73 people watching. I hope you are learning some English over there. But if you would like to comment and you are watching on Instagram, I cannot always see the comments. So come over to YouTube. It is American English with Brent, just like my Instagram. YouTube is just easier. It's just everything is in like one place. I don't have to go to another page. So let's see what is going on in the chat. Looks like Sita dropped a super chat. Thank you so much. I will get to that in a minute. Just want to make sure. Yulia, if I didn't say hi, hi. Michael, Tanya, looks like some good chats are going on in English. Let's see. No, really? I have not heard about that, Isabel. There's an accident on a bridge with a truck. Later on, we are going to talk about a train 
that made a bridge collapse. So hopefully everybody is all right in that. Mode, you get flooded if you don't build a dam. If you build one though, it can fail. Oh, Freddie said a bad word. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. So there is a little, a little swearing there, a little cursing, but it is a good term or a good phrase to know in English. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Caught between a rock and a hard place. Six to one, half a dozen to another. Those three sayings all mean basically if you do something, it could go badly. If you don't do something, it could also go badly. Mode, very clever. Love it. Oh, geez. Why do beavers build dams? Well, that is a very natural thing. And I think humans and beavers build dams for similar reasons. But I'm not sure. If I ever do a lesson on beavers and dams, I'll have to do a res- a little bit of research before. Yeah. And I know Tanya has had flooding in her city about the same time my city had flooding. So, uh uh-oh, the dams in our city got really weak. The water let go during the flooding? Okay, so maybe the most recent flooding was caused by the dam. Mahmood, how are you? Welcome. Yeah, yeah, see? A little sniff there. Sorry. Um... Mo did swear earlier. Sita is a moderator. So if she chooses to um, kick you out mode, I can't do anything about it. And, act, and and I wouldn't do anything about it. So if Sita decides to kick you out, well, maybe I could bring you back for the next one. But 60 to 70 years ago, they didn't even allow damn to be said on TV shows. Now kids say it on TV without even being censored. Oh yeah. Potty mouths. It's another way to say somebody swears a lot is that they have a potty mouth. A lot of younger children do. All right, Olivia, some dams could happen because of man-made dams collapse. It is true. Now, you know what, Sita? says she never acted like a moderator maybe she should to be honest maybe because my channel is so small everybody here is just really nice really cordial so i haven't seen a a problem yet too bad constantine hope you're doing well privet 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 drug i think i said hello friend and actually he says Previet. Yeah, yesterday, um, I do have two students in my class now from Ukraine, but they choose to speak Russian. Both of them do, even though they're young. And so um, one guy has been here for six months. His English is pretty good now. And then the other guy just arrived this week. So we were having a little fun in class. Me embarrassing myself with how I spoke. Sita, thank you so much. She left a, I would say a rather large super chat. Thank you so much. I have a little something for you here. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. That is very kind of you. We will be seeing each other in about a month. This week's lesson that will come out in the middle of the week is actually not going to be a lesson, but I will be talking about the places I will go and the things I will do over the next couple months because it's going to be kind of busy just in case anybody would like to know. Members probably already know, but Mariposa, yes, we are like a little family here. Very nice people for sure. Eager beaver. You might hear that sometimes. 
Look at that. Did you did you know that I was going to say that? Or maybe is that a new comment? Okay. Um, have you ever had Russian students in your school, Kimvek? Um I don't think so. Maybe. But this year, I just know this year we've had four students from Ukraine. Two have moved to another city in my state. And two are I have currently in class. So don't think any Russian students. At least if, if I have had them, it hasn't been in a while. Don't remember. All right. Sita, do what you need to do. And it looked like it was there for a minute. Did Sita? Yeah, here it is. Sita, thank you so much. I don't know who got that gift, but it looks like Sita gifted a membership for a month to somebody. So whoever that person was, I I did not see who got it. But oh, thank you so much for this. New member make sure you check the members tab for the discord the members chat and the bonus videos yeah i'm just checking through the chat to see if it tells me who the new member is kazakhstan's in the house welcome oh it did so it says anuat very nice very nice so sita thank you so much anuat welcome um, if you, if you, I don't know how it works. Is it a gold membership? So if you were gifted a gold membership at least once a month, we do members chats and gold members can come on camera and talk if they would like. If you are a silver member, we have the discord gold members get that too. But if you are a bronze member, once a week, you get a bonus English lesson. So if you would like to become a member, there is a link um, somewhere at the top, I think. So Sita, thank you so much for that. That is very kind of you. Mega, what's going on? Alessandro, welcome. He also lives in Brazil. All right, let's do this. Back to the lesson. Where were we? Where were we? We were talking about. Takes me a second to get set up. That was the picture. Oh, yeah. We were talking about evacuations, right? So let's talk about a couple floods. Both of these happened in the United States. This first one right here. Kind of a famous flood. Lots of people died, unfortunately. The Johnstown flood in 1889. The South Fork Dam failed. So there's that word, failed. It's another way to say it, it didn't work well. Failed. Just like you can fail an English test. I hope that never happens. If you watch my videos each week, it should not happen, but dams can also fail. That means whoever built it didn't do it correctly. Or there was just so much water that it didn't work. So the Johnstown flood in 1889, the South Fork Dam failed, releasing 20 million tons of water that destroyed Johnstown, Pennsylvania, killing more than 2,000 200 people, or you could say 2,200 people. That is a lot. Very sad. Just in case, because I teach American English, that probably means if you're on this channel, you like to learn a little bit about the United States. And since this dam failure happened in Pennsylvania, let me show you a couple images of where Pennsylvania is. We have 50 states in the United States. One of them is Pennsylvania. It looks like that. AI made this for me. Again, AI cannot spell 
but that looks like a pretty good image of the state of Pennsylvania. Now, this one is from Google, and it's a little better. It will show you where in the country this is located. So in the map, you can see New York City is there. So Pennsylvania isn't all that far from New York City. And below the bottom part of the map, you can see that Washington, D.C. is there. And the biggest city in Pennsylvania is called Philadelphia. Philadelphia. We have another dam failure right here. The St. Francis Dam in 1928. This happened in California. Its failure resulted in a huge flood that claimed the lives of at least 431 people. So when you're talking about disasters and you see the number of people who died as a result, when they say at least, it means there might have been more. They just weren't identified. And a lot of times in a flood, it's not fun to think about, but bodies could be swept out into the ocean. Swept out. I have talked about that English phrasal verb before, but not fun to think about. So we mentioned California. Let's take a look at this. I think I have two images of California for you. We would say that California is on the west coast. Pennsylvania is on the east coast. So California is closer to countries like China, Japan, Korea, and places like Pennsylvania are closer to Europe and Africa. Way out west, Los Angeles is the biggest city in California. Two other cities you may have heard of are San Diego and San Francisco. And this is what AI drew. Again, I think it's pretty accurate. And you can see in the left-hand bottom corner is a California bear. And that looks a lot like California's flag. Each state in the United States also has its own flag. All right. That is it on dam failures. So now we get to talk about train accidents. Oh, yeah. More fun stuff. So not so much water with train accidents. I'm sure you all know what a train is in English. It might have been one of the first words you learned. Trains ride on tracks or they ride on rails because we will be talking about derailments soon. Train accidents will be the next main... Let me read that again. Train accidents will be the next man-made disaster we discuss. Let's bring up a picture here. Oh yeah, more destruction. Train disasters. You can see there is a fire. There is smoke coming from the train. It looks like there are some emergency vehicles nearby trying to help those who were hurt. Yeah. One thing that could happen in a train accident would be a collision. A collision. That is the noun, a collision. Trains could collide. That is the verb. A collision is when two trains or a train and another object come together with force. Now, luckily, trains colliding, it doesn't happen too often. There's pretty good technology to make sure that two trains are not on the same track at a time. But you can imagine when it does happen, it could be really bad. 
it could be catastrophic. It's a good adjective to know. It's like really, really bad. Catastrophic. But sometimes, and this wouldn't make our list of bad train accidents, a car could get stuck on the tracks and the train could collide with that car. I have a very good friend who is a, oh, let's talk about that in a minute. Oh, here's another, another bad train accident that AI made. But let's talk about the person who drives the train. You will hear two words in English. You might hear engineer or you might hear conductor. So an engineer or a conductor is a person who drives the train. And as I was saying earlier, I have a good friend, one of my best friends from high school, and his job now is he's the conductor of a train. He works in Boston. And he tells me that a lot of times trains will collide with deer or moose. That is one of the most common collisions that trains will have. Luckily, not too many cars and not too many people. And definitely, he is, I know he has never collided with another train. What about this one? I want to make sure that my pictures line up here. A freight train collided with the passenger train. So there is collide used in a sentence. But now there are two different kinds of trains. A freight train does not have people on it. A freight train probably has goods. They have products. They have cargo. They have things people could buy. Passenger trains, those are trains that carry people. My friend who works in Boston, he now drives passenger trains. When he first became an engineer, he drove freight trains. So I think if you are a passenger train conductor, you might get paid a little more money because let's face it, if something goes wrong, people could get hurt. If you drive a freight train, well, there's probably a lot of money involved. If you collide with something else and it's your fault, there could be a lot of products lost, a lot of money lost, but not a lot of life. All right, let's go back to the chat. When we come back, we'll, we'll talk about derailment. Derailment. All right here. Where were we in the chat? Yeah, it's pretty sad when you think about that, Olivia. She says, I'm so sorry to hear there were so many victims. Yeah, even though it took place in, what was it, 1889, the one in Pennsylvania, it's like over 2,000 people. It's a lot of people. It's a horrible disaster. All right. Oh gosh. Yeah. Mary Posa. Has there ever been a disaster in the state of Maine? Yeah. Unfortunately, if you've been with the channel for a few months, we did have a mass shooting, which is another man-made disaster. If I do a part three, I think that's when we will talk about wars and uh, shootings, things like that. I don't know, but yeah, we've had We've been lucky in my state, but over the last, just in the last year, we've had flooding and we've had a, another man-made disaster, which we would call a mass shooting, which is not great. All right. I see some people chatting. Tanya, very kind. Thank you so much for the super chat have a little something for you oh, thank you so much for the super chat so tanya says i really love this lesson thank you also for the members chat today 
We always learn so much more besides the actual topic. Keep it up, Brent. Thank you. Sometimes I ramble on too much about other things. I try to stay on topic, but sometimes I I wander a little bit. I think today I'm doing pretty good about sticking to the topic. But Tanya, thank you so much. Very generous, Tanya. Very generous. All right. Bangladesh is in the house. Great country there. Mahdi, how are you? Hello, everyone. I come from Insta. Oh, it has so many. Fo- you you saw on Instagram? Yeah, Instagram is like blowing up for some reason. They're on on YouTube, I think I have twenty eight thousand followers. On Instagram, it's like I don't four hundred. It's over four hundred and four hundred and forty thousand followers. So yeah, thank you, Instagram. How many? Four hundred. You can't see that. 448,000 followers. Kind of crazy. Thank you so much, Marty. All right. Did I miss anything? Michael. Michael. Another super chat. Thank you. Here you go. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, no. Hopefully, Michael is still here. But Michael just said, just want to say thank you. I have to go back to work in a couple minutes and watch the lesson on replay. Have a great weekend. Michael, don't work too hard. You'll hear that in English. If a friend has to go to work and they say, hey, I got to go to work. You can say, hey, don't work too hard. I'm sure their boss doesn't want to hear that. But yeah, hey, don't work too hard. That's not about... um man-made disasters little bonus there yeah Madi, thank you so much let me just check instagram i have to go over to the other page but hello instagram oh somebody over there is saying hey please subscribe to my channel can i can i block them on here no probably not uh that that's the great thing about youtube also is that you can uh hello i'll just say hello over there Um, but yeah, Instagram is, is not as good as, um, YouTube for, for pretty much anything. It's YouTube is just a little bit easier, but hopefully everybody over there is doing well on Instagram. All right. Shall we get back to the English lesson? Just so many things going on with, uh. YouTube and Instagram. All right, actually, I'm going to end the Instagram live stream. So if you are watching on Instagram and you would like to continue with this lesson, we still have to talk about collapsing bridges and train derailments. Head over to YouTube, American English with Brent. Thank you all on Instagram for joining. All right, see you later. All right, YouTube, I can now focus better. Focus, focus. All right, back to the lesson. What did we, oh, I forgot. What did What did I say we had to start with? Engineer, did we talk about that? Derailment. That's where we ended, right? Derailment. I think I have a picture for you too. Yep, that's a derailment. Okay. I have all the pictures lined up with all of the sentences. Here we go. A derailment. A derailment is when a train comes off its tracks. So the thing a train rides on is often called the railroad tracks or just the tracks, but sometimes you will hear it called the rails, the rails. And that's where the word derailment comes from. And maybe it happens because of a collision, but it's when the train 
comes off its tracks. Here we go there. I'm going to leave this picture up. If you ever hear fatalities in English when talking about disasters, it's another way to say somebody died. Fatalities are deaths that happen because of an accident. So in the picture, you can see that the train has derailed. It looks like there may have been some cars involved. Right at the front of the picture, we would call that a stretcher. That thing that looks like it could, could uh, move a body on wheels. We call that a stretcher. And then all of the other white things on the ground, we might say they are covered with sheets or maybe they are in body bags. So definitely not fun to think about, but if you ever have to talk about deaths, a fatality is when someone dies. Maybe they had a fatal heart attack. It's a heart attack that caused them to, to die. If you're ever reading the news, a fatality is when somebody died. A casualty is when somebody died. And it also includes people who have gotten hurt. So fatalities are only people who died. Casualties are people who died and also people who got hurt. Hopefully that helps for the next time uh, you are listening to the news. How about this? Got a sentence for you. He suffered a fatal accident when the train collided with his car on the tracks. So I wanted to include that sentence because it talks about some of the things we've already talked about in the lesson. He suffered a fatal accident when the train collided with his car on the tracks. All right. Talk about a couple disasters that happened around the world. I apologize. I will not say this correctly. This happened in Japan. I'm nervous. Amagasaki. Amagasaki. If you are from Japan, tell me, how did I do? Amagasaki rail crash. This happened in Japan and it happened in 2005. So pretty recently, 2005, a commuter train derailed and collided with an apartment building resulting in 106 deaths and more than 550 injuries. So you could also say 106 fatalities. I'm not good at math, but if you add those two numbers up, that would be the number of casualties. 656. Please check my math. I'm an English teacher not a math teacher. So another way to say that is 106 fatalities and 556 casualties. I thought I wanted to say something else about that, but let's make that picture a little bigger. I mean, just awful. Oh yes, commuter train. That's one type of train we haven't talked about. So a commuter train is a type of passenger train. So it has people on it, but if it's a commuter train, it's mostly for people going to work and back. So a commuter train would only, it would only be a train in like one city, probably. Um, some commuter trains in New York City, our biggest city, will also go to places like New Jersey and just outside of the city. But a commuter train is mostly for people going to work and coming home from work. 
All right. I already know I will not say this correctly. So Tanya, Michael, everyone else in Germany, I apologize. I looked this up and I thought I was pronouncing it correctly. Tanya told me in the members chat, no, not right. And I even left a little note for myself. Can you see it? Eskied, Eskied. So the Eskied train disaster, this happened in Germany and it happened on June 3rd, 1998. The high speed train derailment resulted in 101 fatalities and over 100 injuries. So super sad. People on their way to work, maybe on vacation, and there was a a problem on the train. And it ended up uh, killing over 100 people. This was the deadliest high-speed train accident in history. Now, I've talked about high-speed trains, but I haven't explained it. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a train that goes really fast. So a commuter train is not going to be a high-speed train. And I believe in Japan and France, those two countries have the fastest trains in the world. The TGV, TGV, right? All right. And this will lead us into our next man-made disaster, which is bridges collapsing. So what made the train disaster in Germany so bad is that it caused a bridge to collapse. And you can see this in the picture. Now, there are trains all over the places, all over the place. This is what AI thought this disaster looked like, the Eskied disaster in Germany. Don't think it had quite that many trains. But you can see that there is a bridge that collapsed. The bridge is no longer there. When we talk about bridges collapsing, And in the picture there, you can see a bridge. They mostly go over water. Bridges are great for trains or people or cars and trucks to cross a body of water. But sometimes bridges can fatigue. Fatigue is a great word to know in English. It's another way to say tired. But bridges can also become fatigued. Take a look. Fatigued means getting weaker because of too much use. As cars and trucks use the bridge, it will fatigue over time. And if you are really, really sick and you don't have any energy, maybe you haven't had enough water or enough liquid, you could feel fatigued. So it's almost like really, really, really tired. Also, if you are lifting weights, if you are working out, your muscles can become fatigued because you use them so much. How about this? Don't think I have a picture of fatigued people, but people can become fatigued too. It's like really, really tired, fatigued. All right. This is a little confusing. Oh, oh, actually, I do have a picture of fatigued. Here are a bunch of people who look fatigued. You can see these people. Maybe you feel fatigued at the end of a long work day. Some of these people are yawning. Thank you, AI, for drawing all of these people who look fatigued. But I also wanted to talk about um, another type of people, and these are engineers. And what can make this so difficult is that earlier in the lesson, we talked about engineers are people who drive trains, also conductors. 
But engineers can also design bridges. Come on, English. Why do you have to be so difficult? One word for two very different types of jobs. Engineers are people who design bridges. Sometimes they get things wrong. But engineers are also people who drive trains. Doesn't make any sense. If somebody is designing a building, they might be called an engineer, but they're probably called an architect in English. They're probably an architect. Engineers build bridges for the most part. Also dams, like we talked about earlier, I would say engineers might also design and build dams. Hopefully that helps. So an inspection. Think about bridges. Think about dams. Every so often, they should get an inspection to make sure they are not becoming fatigued. What is an inspection? It's when people look closely at something to make sure it's okay. So hopefully we won't have any bridges collapsing because during an inspection, the inspectors, those are the people who inspect things, the inspectors will find places where the bridge is failing before it is a complete disaster. In that picture, I also have a car. So at least where I live, one time a year, I have to take my car in to get it inspected just to make sure there aren't any problems. And it's not because I want to do it. It's because it's the law. And on my front windshield, I will get an inspection sticker to say that my car has been inspected and that it is safe. All right, let's check the chat here. Remind me to go back to the um, bridge disaster in Washington. That's where we'll start next, okay? All right. Yeah, I hope none of these pictures ever become real. Tragic picture. Okay, Tanya, see, in 2006, a serious train accident occurred in my neighborhood on test tracks with a new magnetic levitation train. There were 23 fatalities? That did not come up in my research. Maybe, you know, 23 deaths was not enough. But let's talk about what Tanya said because she said some pretty difficult English words. I think some pretty, like, advanced words here. So a test track, it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's It was a new kind of track. They were like testing it out. Magnets? Do you know what those are? Like they're two things. They have what we call in English poles. Sometimes they are attracted. Sometimes they repel. Magnets. It just depends on which pole is facing each other. Levitation, that means it's just off the ground a little bit. It's like flying, but like like really low, really low to the ground, maybe that far off the ground. Interesting. I'm definitely going to look that up when we get done with this lesson. Wow, I did not know we had levitating trains. German engineering. You will hear that in English. German engineering, it's some of the best in the world. German engineering. Saru, first time watching a live video. Well, thank you. Welcome. Glad you're here. Ahmad, hope you're doing well. Isabel, in France, we've had some accidents. Oh no, because bridges are fatiguing. And I know 
France in France, you pay a lot of taxes. So that tax money should be going to bridge inspections. See, there have been a couple bridges in Maine within the last five years that they've had to temporarily close. So not permanent. Permanent would be forever. Temporary means for a short period of time. But because of inspectors finding places on the bridge that had fatigued, the bridge had to be temporarily closed. When we had flooding back in December, there were quite a few bridges in my state that were closed. And the last bridge just opened last week or two weeks ago. I'm recording this in March. So they had, they had to fix it because of the flooding to make sure it was safe. Love it. When our train company attempted a speed record in my area, the, so in English we would say T G V, but I like the French way of saying it. Is it T G V T G V the, the, Oh gosh. Derailed and killed some, some kids inside the train. Oh, man, that is sad. I mean, anytime anybody dies, right? It's pretty sad, but then like kids, innocent kids. Oh, that's awful. Hello. I don't even dare pronounce your name, but welcome. Welcome. Olivia. Yeah, they should be done regularly for safety. Have we talked about bridge uh, buildings collapsing? I, Nasran, good to see you again. Uh, we haven't. That might be for part three. The only time we talk, have we talked about it yet? Yeah, the apartment building in Japan that collapsed. But no, we could definitely talk about buildings, maybe for part three. Abdi, hope you're doing well. All right, should we get back to it? Yep, trucks and cars going over the bridge every day. It will cause the bridge to fatigue. It will get tired. We have a few more to talk about. This thing, Tacoma. This is in the state of Washington. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you can look this up on, on YouTube. It's pretty famous, even though you can see down below, it happened in 1940, but there were cameras capturing what happened. And this is all the fault of the engineers. So it's the people who designed the bridge, they are the people who caused this to happen. Good news, no people die in this bridge collapse, but a dog does. You can look it up, it's crazy. It's because of the wind, a little wind starts the bridge to rock back and forth and it just gets so big that it will eventually collapse. All right, this bridge, it's called the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. It happened in 1940. This bridge in Washington, USA moved a lot in the wind and finally fell apart. Engineers designed the bridge wrong. Okay, I also want to talk about suspension bridge. In English, we would call this type of bridge a suspension bridge because you can see the cables that are going from the tower down below, it's called a suspension bridge. And in 1940, this was a new kind of bridge. Not all of them worked out well. One of the most famous suspension bridges in the United States is in California, in the city of San Francisco, and it's called the Golden Gate Bridge. Very old bridge, a suspension bridge. That bridge worked. It's been around for a while. Um, let's talk about Washington though. This can be confusing even to some like Americans. 
Washington State is not the same as Washington, D.C. Washington State is out on the West Coast, close to California. There's one state in between Washington and California, and we call it Oregon. Some people call it Oregon. But Washington looks like that. And I can make it a little bigger with this Google map. So you can see the biggest city in Washington is called Seattle. Vancouver is up there, part of Canada. And down below here is, is Portland. But that is Portland, Oregon. Where I live in Maine, our biggest city is also Portland. But Portland, Oregon, that's the bigger of the two Portlands. Okay, going back to that Tacoma Bridge disaster, luckily, nobody died. But there was a dog stuck in the car when the bridge collapsed. Yeah, so the bridge started swaying back and forth. There were cars on the bridge, and one car, if you look up the video, there's a car on the bridge, Everybody got out, but the poor dog was left inside. So you can take a look at that bridge if you would like. Another bridge, another suspension bridge. This is called the Silver Bridge in 1967. This is a bridge between West Virginia and Ohio, also in the United States. This bridge broke and fell because of a tiny problem in one part, poor engineering. So again, man-made disaster. This is the fault of people. The Silver Bridge was a suspension bridge that connected West Virginia and Ohio over the Ohio River. I think I have a picture, yeah. So we're back on the East Coast now, and you can see in the middle is the state of West Virginia, not too far from Philadelphia. And then we have Ohio, right in the middle of the country, really. Columbus is the biggest city in Ohio, but you might also hear Cincinnati and Cleveland. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in Cleveland. There is a picture of what AI thinks the Ohio River might look like. Kind of peaceful. And unfortunately, this man-made disaster happened at the worst time. It happened during rush hour. So it happened at the worst possible time during rush hour, 46 people ended up dying because of the bridge collapse. 46 people. What was this? 1967. So you would think by then, engineers would design bridges without flaws. But unfortunately, that is not the case. But that is the end of our English lesson Part two of man-made disasters. All right. I have another meeting I have to go to. Yeah, I, I, I'm worried about part three with terrorism could be one. And also a war. Uh, it might be, that'll be an interesting one for part three. We will do it at some point, but yeah. Should talk about that. I just don't like to get too political with these English lessons. So I do have a meeting that I need to go to. Wow, I didn't realize it was so late. Thank you all for joining. I need to go. Thank you all for the super chats. Where is it? Sita, thank you so much. Sita, thank you for gifting the membership. Tanya. Thank you so much. And Michael, I hope you had a good day at work. Maybe you're watching on replay. 
All right. Adios, amigos. I got to get out of here.